Okay, now I'm officially recording. And let's take a look at the lesson of the day. Share my screen. Today we are doing lesson three, pattern, sketching on faces and extrude subtraction. So let's talk patterns. So patterns allow the creation of repeating patterns like holes in a window screen. Guys, I gotta tell you, this is one of those things that I just do not like, okay? I gotta teach it to you because every CAD course has it. You need to know it's out there. But honestly, there's a much better way to do this, okay? One of the things I'm gonna stress to you in this course is the KISS principle. Keep it simple. And patterns go in the absolute opposite direction. Patterns allow you to draw a lot of lines really fast, and then you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you have to constrain, and it can end up blowing up and becoming an absolute nightmare. So if you just do several simple sketches, that is always, always better than doing one massive sketch because it doesn't blow up as much. Okay, I take it that some of you probably saw that uh, in the last homework. You'd put in a smart dimension and things would go all haywire. I hear nothing, but I'm assuming that happened to yeah, some people. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Okay, it, it's absolutely a real thing. And the best way to minimize that is to just keep the sketch simple. Okay. So let's do an example. I can show you slides all day long, but it's far better to just actually show you on SolidWorks how it's done. Okay, so let's see. I messed with my uh, configuration yesterday. That's why I'm getting that error. Okay, so I've got a nice new part. I'll draw a rectangle. As always, we're gonna smart dimension it. So I'm gonna locate it in space. Whoops. And I'm gonna provide the sizes for it. <clears throat> Does it matter the size or anything or just do it randomly? No, nah, I'm just doing it random. I just need something to draw on. Okay, and next what we're gonna do is in keeping with my whole keep it simple philosophy. We've got a fully defined sketch. So I'm gonna extrude that and I'll go with the 0.1 inch default thickness. That's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna just turn off the visibility of these planes. I wanna keep my screen nice and clean, nice and simple. So I'm gonna click on view, hide and show, and I can click off the axes. They're still there, I haven't deleted them. It's just they're invisible. There. And I can just as easily go back to view, hide and show, turn them back on. Do you click the boss extruder? Say again, Olet. Um, so when you go to extrude, do you click the boss extruder? Um, uh, no. Let's let's try it again. So I'll delete the feature. So I just right clicked on the feature and hit delete. Here's my sketch. So 
I'll select it. I'm clicking on extrude boss base. So it extruded the sketch I had and it showed me what it's going to create. It gave me a little preview and I said okay. Okay, so in the spirit of keeping it simple, we're going to create another simple sketch. This time, I'm going to sketch on this flat face. I'll click on the face, and I'm going to click Sketch, and that's going to create a completely new sketch, too. I like clicking Normal, too just so it's you know, flat to my view in front of me. Let's put another box right here. We're gonna make something like uh, a ventilation screen for some electronics or something like that. So we'll put the box on. We're gonna size it. So I'll make this 0.5 inches in width. I'll make it uh, Let's do it this way. Let's make it 3 eighths. Remember, you can always put in fractions. That's absolutely fine. It will resolve it into a number in SOLIDWORKS. So I'll put 3 eighths of an inch for the height. And then I still have to locate it in space. In this case, I'm gonna locate it on the part. So I'm clicking on the edge. and I'll locate it off the top edge. On the edge of the part or the edge of the other rectangle? The edge of the part. So the solid body edge. Here, let's do the top one again. So I'm clicking on the top of my sketch and I'm choosing the top edge of the solid body. It's already got a quarter inch in there, so I'll say okay. Okay, now I have a fully defined sketch that resides on the face of this solid body. At this point, we can create a pattern. So I'm gonna come up here to linear sketch pattern. And I'm gonna click on entities to pattern. We have to tell it what we want to pattern. I'm gonna go right around and I'm gonna click each of these curves. And again, it starts giving me a preview of what it's going to create. So we have an offset of 0.1 inches in the X direction and we can change that. So if I wanna just use the up down and get it approximately right, no, we can, can go you over to the pattern menu. Say again. Where did you go to get the pattern menu? Right up here, linear sketch pattern up on top in the command manager. Where it says linear sketch pattern. Okay. So I'm going to make this offset. Let's make it three quarters of an inch. And I can have any number of repeating patterns that I want. So I could have three or four. I could also make a vertical pattern. So this direction two, if I click on it, you'll see there's a Y direction offset and then the number of occurrences that I want vertically. So you can see I have two rows. And that gives me a grid pattern of those same little boxes. But if I were to hit OK right now, those top boxes would be off the part. And that's kind of a problem. So if it's going in the wrong direction, you can flip the direction of the y-axis by using this little reverse button. So now if I just reverse the direction of y, 
it puts all of my pattern actually on the metal. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And now I've got a whole bunch of lines that I have to constrain, which goes completely against my philosophy of keep it simple. But you guys need to know this. So let's go through the process of constraining this. So the important things for constraint are going to be how far apart are they in the X? How far apart are they in the Y? We're going to apply smart dimensions to set the distance of our pattern. Well, let's see, I think I'll make this uh, 3 16 of an inch or 0.8125 inches. Then I need the distance between the pattern vertically, and we'll say 0.75 inches. Okay. So I've got the first block sized, and then all of these are gonna be the same length and width. I've got the spacing, but notice I still have all these blue lines, and that's kind of a problem. I'm just gonna say okay for now. And this is where people generally get into trouble with this one because it's a little strange. If I hold down on this corner, notice, actually, let me put one more. I'll put one more row. SolidWorks will allow you to stagger these patterns at an angle. And that's what we need to lock down next to get it fully defined. So if I want to go back into the pattern, I just highlight one of the line entities. I'm going to right click. Okay, somebody's got some uh, reggae going on. You need to mute your speaker, please. Thank you. Okay, so if I go to three, three rows of boxes, you can see that they're at that weird angle. And I'll go back to two to keep everything on the metal. So I need to establish what the offset is between this line and this line. And I'm gonna do that by creating a smart dimension and I'll go 0.25. So you're creating a smart dimension for the whole row? Yes. That is the offset for the entire row. So if, if I were to change that, let's say I make it 0.1. See how it changes the skewing angle? Okay, now I've got a fully defined uh, sketch. I can exit it. And now I'm gonna cut out these little windows and I'm gonna do it with an extruded cut. I'll click extruded cut. And for direction one, I'm gonna say through all. I wanna punch little windows right through all of the metal. And there's my little windows. Okay. I'm sorry, could you redo that again? I missed it. How, how I did the cut? Yes. Okay. Okay, so here we are, we're back in the sketch where we created our pattern. I'm gonna get out of the sketch. I'll click on sketch two. Then I'm gonna come up to the command manager and I'm gonna say extruded cut. For direction one, I'm gonna say through all so that I cut through the entire part regardless of thickness. And I'll choose okay, the little green check. And that punches out the windows. Okay, 
So that is how you do a, a staggered pattern. We can also go back in now. If we modify the sketch, you know, we don't have to have a stagger. We can put zero and then the pattern all lines up. As Soon as I get out, everything updates. And that's because we do everything with parametric modeling. It's all number driven. Okay, so being an engineer, one of the things we love to do the most is change stuff. So I take this to my boss and he goes, oh, it's great, it's wonderful, but I only wanted four columns. So let's go in and look at how we modify a pattern so that we only have four columns. I'm gonna go back to the sketch. I'm gonna click on one of the pattern entities, right click and edit linear pattern. Notice right over here, we got some little numbers. We got a two right there and we have a five right there. You can actually double click on those. Oh, come on, oh, I've got the dialog open. All right, let's do it through the dialog. So if I say four through the dialog, now when I update my part, now I just have four columns of windows. Now let's do it without the dialog. So I'll edit the sketch. If I wanna go back to five columns, I can just double click on the little number. I'll put five and I go right back. So these are your number of rows. This is your number of columns. Okay, so that is how you do uh, linear rectangular patterning. What would be a use for this? So again, I don't care for sketch patterning. I find that it's too many lines in a sketch. Um, I much prefer feature patterning, which I think we go through in the next lecture. Um, but like this, this is something I do quite a bit of actually. So let's say that I'm making an electronics enclosure and I need some uh, airflow ventilation. holes to get some ventilation going through, cool the electronics. I would absolutely do something like this. And then I can take this part, create an output file, send it to a laser cutting shop, and they could do this pattern just beautifully on a laser cutter. And that's, that's where I typically use it. Okay. So that was doing patterns uh, rectangularly. We can also do it uh, rotationally or circular patterns. So let's do a circular pattern. I'm going to come over. I'm going to stay right in the same part and I'm just going to get rid of my cut extrude and I'm just right clicking and hitting delete. Now my pattern's gone and I'm left with just a blank piece of metal. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna right click on sketch one. I'm gonna edit sketch one. And let's see, let's make this six inches. And I'll make this six inches. It's a waste of metal, but hey, it's virtual metal. So what the heck? Okay, so if you wanna do a circular pattern, one of the things you need to do first is start a sketch and you need to have a center of rotation that you're gonna put your round pattern about. So think of it like a hinge pin, something like that. I'm gonna come up here to my sketch palette and I'm gonna grab a point and I'm gonna put a point right on the face of the metal. Okay. 
Next, we have to have something that we're going to revolve. Well, let's see. I mean, typical is going to be a circle. You know, think about how the wheels stay on your car. You're going to have a circular pattern of bolts on the wheel rim. Very, very common. So let's work with that. I'll say OK. Just as always, we've put a curve on, so we need to locate this in space and size it. I'm going to choose the edge. I'll choose the distance. So maybe 1.625, 1 and 5 eighths. I'll come down from the top. Maybe an inch and a half. And let's make it oh, 0.5. Now, I would have to fail myself on my own homework because we never, ever, ever cut extrude circles. But for this example, I'm just going to let it pass because bolt circles are so common. They're used everywhere. And again, I'm going to show you a much better way to do this when we get to the whole wizard and feature patterning. But for right now, you just need to know that this exists. So under linear sketch pattern, if you hit the little drop down, there's a circular sketch pattern option. I'm going to choose circular sketch pattern. And if we look in the dialog, this first blue box with the little roundy, roundy arrows, okay, that's where we say what we're going to revolve about. And I'm going to choose my point. Okay. I would encourage you to put on dimension radius. And you may or may not want dimension angular spacing. Let's kind of, we'll turn that on for right now. I'm going to say revolve about 360 degrees. So it's going to do a full circle on the plate. It's going to put four instances of this circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I have to tell it what to make a pattern of. So I'm going to choose entities to pattern. And poof, it automatically draws four circles 90 degrees apart. When I say OK, it automatically drops in the distance to the center of rotation and the angle between them. This is where it gets a little bit weird, folks. Okay, And this is also why I don't care for patterns. If I grab the center of it, oops, notice that I clicked on that little point, and I said revolve about that. But it does not automatically make it coincident with a point. So I could go in now, and I could actually delete the point. And I, I find this just awful. I find this bad programming. So I need to dimension the location of the center of rotation on the part. Oops. Come on. Obviously, I need more caffeine this morning. Oh, OK. So some of you are getting gray dimensions. You are seeing stuff like this, make this dimension driven. Let's say I say OK. OK, that's what gives me the gray dimension. What it's saying is, I already have everything I need. I don't need this. But if you want me to put it on the screen for you, I'll give you a dimension that's just for informational purposes. That's what the gray is all about. I would encourage you to just get rid of those. Okay. 
So I'm looking down here, I see fully defined sketch. I'm good to go. I can now exit the sketch. And if I really wanted to do badly on my own homework, I could extrude those circles, do an extrude cut, and I get a circular pattern of holes. Okay. I'll go back in and edit the sketch. So same deal. If I click on one curve and say edit circular pattern, you know, maybe I do four bolt holes and my boss comes by and says, now nah, we're gonna do five, five bolts on this car. I can change it to five bolts. It automatically updates the 72 degrees because we told it, uh, we told it full circle. And I'll say, okay, there's five. I want to do a heavy truck, I can do 12. You guys get the idea. And as soon as I get out, there we go, I've got 12 bolt holes. So they're exclusive for the bolts? Like, could you put wiring through them as well? You can put anything you want. This is just geometry. Okay, I chose circles because bolt circles are a common thing. I could have just as easily made those triangles. I could have made them, I don't know, keyhole shaped. It doesn't matter what the geometry is. All that you need to get out of this is that it will make a circular pattern of them. So let's change it. Instead of circles, let's do something different. So I'll get rid of the cut extrude. Oops, I have to get out of the sketch first. I get rid of the cut feature. Uh, let's even get rid of the sketch. So I'm left back with just a sheet of metal. So I could do something, I don't know, really crazy. Um, I'll create a new sketch on the face. And maybe I want something, let's do a hand-drawn slot. So I'll draw a rectangle. I'll choose the circle icon. I could do it like this. I'm clicking on the midpoint. I go up to the top. I'll do a trim. I'm holding down the left mouse button and wanding over what I want to make go away. Delete the end line. Delete the end line. I always want a smooth transition right in here. So I'll add tangency. Clear the selections. Put tangency over there. I've got to size this thing. So I'll make a one inch slot radius of eh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so that sizes it. Now I've got to locate the slot in space. I'll choose the edge, go to the center of the circle. Okay, I'm good to go. I have a fully defined sketch. Let me put a point in right here so that I have something to revolve about. That'll be my center of rotation. I'll choose circular sketch pattern. I'll choose my point of rotation. 
Okay, came up 0.13, that looks good. 360 degrees, equal spacing, four items. Yeah, let's make it six, we'll make it more interesting. We'll choose entities to pattern. I'm gonna pattern that, 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 and that. Make sure dimension radius is on, dimension angular spacing. I'll say okay. So now I have to define these other ones, which is gonna be interesting. Um, hmm. Let's see, how do I want to do that? So I've got the angle, I've got that. I think all I need is the distance off the edge. Obviously, I didn't practice this one. So if I try to move this now, I can get rid of that initial point that I had that's not associated. Okay, so I did the distance over and I put it right on the end points of these two construction lines. And again, these lines, you see the short, the long, these are construction lines. These do not create any geometric edges. They're just there to help us draw. I'll say okay, exit my sketch, do an extruded cut. And there's another example of a circular pattern. From a machine design standpoint, this is actually quite interesting. I use this a lot on the F22 program because if you put a bolt through here, a bolt through here, a bolt through here, all, all through these, if the part grows and contracts thermally, it always stays centered, but it can get bigger and smaller without fighting its mounts. So interesting bit of trivia for you guys, but this is a very, very useful uh, piece of geometry if you're into fighter jets. Okay. Let's see what else we had on the slides. That was pretty much it, I think. As I told you before, the previous lecture last week, that was by far the worst one. That was where I basically threw you guys to the wolves, only because of the amount of content. Okay, so we did circular patterns, we did sketching on faces. Again, all you do for sketching on faces, you gotta have a flat face. You click on it, you create a new sketch and draw. So when I sent in my homework yeah, Kate. the other day, I accidentally sent it labeled as lesson one because- Yeah, it didn't matter. As soon as I saw the parts, I knew what it was. Okay. Yeah, that, I wouldn't do it again, but it didn't hurt anything. Okay. Okay, so let me just demonstrate this quick square bolt problem. And then what I want you guys to do is start on the homework. I always like giving you guys time to do the homework in class because then I'm right here to answer questions and we can just share screens and get you going. There is absolutely no educational value of you guys sitting there for hours and hours completely lost. Okay. So I'm just gonna blow away this. Let's use a whole new part. So I'm gonna draw on the right plane this time, just to be novel.
this time I clicked on the origin when I started drawing and it automatically gave me this coincident constraint. So now my part is located in space and all I have to do is size it. So let's see, we'll make a half inch bolt head and we'll make it a half an inch high. That's one thing I meant to ask about the last, le the last lesson homework that you gave us. I was wondering why you had us define it from the origin and not just define it off of it, like pretty much drawing off of it. Yeah, it was simply to draw, to drive home the notion of you got to locate it in space. All Normally right. when I do my parts, I always go off the origin. But I just wanted to make sure that was really, really clear. Okay, so let's say that maybe the bolt head is 3 16 thick. And now I'm gonna draw on this face to draw the body of the bolt or the round shaft of the bolt rather. So I'm gonna create a second sketch on that face. I'll draw a circle. I have to locate it. So maybe we do a, a quarter inch shaft. So I told you about construction geometry before. This is actually a really good time to use construction geometry. So I can draw a line from the corner of that face to the corner of this face. I'm gonna right click, say construction, and then I'm gonna make the center point of the circle lie on the midpoint of the construction line. So I'll add relation. And if I just mouse over, I'll click on the midpoint and I'll say coincident. Now what's nice about this is that no matter how I change the bolt head, maybe I wanna make it bigger. So maybe I want a one inch bolt head When I update, because I've gone corner to corner and used the midpoint, the shaft of the bolt always stays centered. So I'm gonna click on sketch two, and I can either do a solid extrude, and I'll say that it, the shaft of the bolt is an inch long. Okay. A little bit funny looking square head bolt, but let's make it look a little better. Maybe we'll go with a uh, half inch. Yeah, that looks a little more reasonable. Okay. Or I could have also done a nut. Oops. So I'll delete the feature and I'm just right clicking on the feature in the part manager. I'll hit delete. And I could also do an extrude cut. Again, I would get dinged hard on the homework because I should be using the whole wizard, but okay. You know, just for the sake of example and discussing extrude cut, I'm gonna say through all and now it becomes more like a nut. There are no threads on it, but it's more like a nut, okay? So I've yammered through most of the class, folks. Have any of you started the homework? Do you have any questions? Okay. Do um, you have any office hours this week? I do. So last week we did office hours at, let's see, 
it's going to be the same as last week. And I made that just a recurring meeting. Let's see. Zoom meetings. Uh, so Wednesdays at 3. And what I'll do is I will post the link for the 3 o'clock office hours. And it will be the same password that you guys always use. So feel free to drop in for uh, three to five o'clock office hours. If you have any kind of, you know, big questions, if you're really stuck on the homework, stop in, let's talk about it. Stop in virtually. Okay, so let's see what we got for homework. We have lesson three. We have this cool gear blank. So you will notice a whole lot of repeating geometry about a circle. Gee, that, that might be pattern type stuff, okay? So 30 teeth around the circle, four little punch outs. Um, that's, this is a good problem. We also have, oops. I gave you this little grate, which is just a little piece of metal with a bunch of triangle perforations through it. And then, I gave you this little mirror holder. So this will give you a chance to try drawing on faces. It's kind of a goofy part. Um, but you know, it's a good example of drawing slots, drawing on faces, that kind of thing. And you'll get to do your first uh, true extrudes. Okay, one thing I would do wanna say about this part, this has an aligned view, which we haven't talked about yet. So this weird view that's at an angle is coming straight off this face. And I did it so that I could get the true size of this little window. If you zoom in when you, when you download this part, you'll see the true size of the window right here. It's just 1.5 by inch and a quarter. And then the depth is over here at an eighth of an inch. Okay. Why don't you guys start with this one? Students generally find this one easiest. And then try the other ones. Is a question on this one? Yeah, shoot. Uh, how do you make the uh, angled face, uh, like after you ex extrude it, I guess? Uh, the easiest way is to make it before you extrude it. So for example, if I go back to this one, let's delete that. Delete that. We'll edit our sketch. If I draw a line like this and trim it, Smart Dimension gives you the option to do angles. So you, you can do angles in them. Say again. How do you do the angles in the smart dimensions? Okay. You just click two lines. If the lines are not parallel, it automatically comes up as an angle. So if I have this with no dimensions, I'm going to click the first line, the second line, it automatically comes up as an angle. And I just say, okay. And now I still need to size the thing. So in this case, I'll have the bottom dimension, the height. And that's how you would fully dimension that, or one way you could. 
you know, there are many ways to fully dimension. So for example, yeah, be quiet. So you were saying to start with the mirror homework and not the grate? I think the mirror is probably the easiest one. So don't get all frustrated. You know, start with something easy and then go a little bit harder. It's better to have more accomplished than less. I could also define it by going like this. Oh, not enough caffeine. I want that endpoint and the top line. Okay. And this will also get me to fully defined. All right, so I've eaten up the entire class period, guys. I apologize. I wanted to be done sooner to let you start and ask questions. Any questions that I can answer before we park company? I see a lot of blank faces. So you're either ready to quit the class or you're good. Is there any like specific geometry figures that we need to know for the assignments? No, I mean, pretty much it's just like the mirror holder. If you can draw lines and draw a slot and draw a rectangle, you're good. So you've got the slot tool up here. You can use that. You've got the rectangle and you've got lines. That's all you need. Okay, so some of you may have another class. If there are questions, if you want me to stay on the line, I don't have anything after this. And I'm perfectly willing to help you guys for you know another 45 minutes or so. Would for that this, be? I'll sign it. Um, what would be the process that you'd recommend like shape-wise for that one? So the general process that I think of, let me go back to, is I look for big sections of the part that are kind of uniform. So I would start off by drawing this side face first and extruding it. Because yeah, there's some other changing stuff, but it's mostly uniform, you know, with this face going in this direction. Then I would draw this cutout on the face, this little indent. And then I'd come over here to this top face and I'd draw a slot on the top face and I would do a cut extrude down into it. And that's how I'd go about that part. What I am having an issue with is the base length of the bottom of the mirror holder. Base length at the bottom. Oh no, it, from the top down view, is that the 2.75 is a square? Or not square, it's the 2.75 there at the bottom. Maybe I'm not pointing out what I'm trying to say yes. best. Yes, so this 2.75 right here is the distance from here to here in that cut section view. All right, because I was trying to figure out that bottom measurement. So it's yep. more of like a rectangle. Yeah, it's a rectangle. Yep. Yeah. So go back and you think about the glass box thing. Okay. So if this were a, a top view of the glass box, this would be like a, a cut through side view. Also, another issue I'm having is that that 135 degrees is driven for me. Okay, so you've probably already defined it. So if it's driven, Delete the driven dimension, um, and you've you've already defined it somehow. I'd have to look at your part to know. If you want to share your screen, you're welcome to. It was driven, and then I just deleted it, and then did it again, and now it's not driven. So I'm assuming I got rid of the thing that was making it driven, and now it's not. So now we're good. Okay. That okay. Was weird. It's, yeah, that is weird. I have a quick question. Yeah, shoot. Uh, when is this going to be due? 
Uh, all of the due dates for the course are on the syllabus. Oh, okay, okay. So just come on over here to the syllabus. Today is 9 8, 8 o'clock class. This is due on 9 14 at 8 a.m. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, I have a question too. Shoot. So um, for this homework, do we have to use like the um, the circle wizard thing for to extrude to extrude the circles, or can we just do it like how you did it for this homework? Okay, so if it's a hole, if a circle round hole, I'm going to want you to use uh, the hole wizard, which we haven't gone over yet. Okay. However, however, on this homework. You got a slot here. I don't care how you create that slot. If you want to use the whole wizard, fine. If you want to just draw it and cut extrude it, that's all good. I just don't care on this one. Okay, and then the other ones, they're great. There's no holes in this. And the gear blank, no holes in that. Okay. So do not worry about the whole wizard. We just haven't gotten there yet. Okay, thanks. But soon, I promise. Uh, I have another question. Shoot. Is there a dimension that we should be uh, extruding the mirror part to? Yes. Is it on there? Yes, it is. Okay. So your extrusion length will be... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Why didn't I make that obvious? It's right there. It's three. It's really weird. This way you oh, did yeah. it. It's it, really it, weird. It's oh, right here. You. Yeah, I sh the problem is this got busy. I should have put it out here somewhere where it's more obvious. But yeah, three. Okay, that looks a bit weird on my screen the way I did that, but okay. Because I don't have a... I don't have perspective on, so it's not going to have the lines go together so it looks a bit weird. You see, I personally don't like perspective. That's totally up to you. That's one of those taste things. I always leave it off. So as far as the great um, assignment, how would you go about like doing that one? So I would do that one as, first off, just draw a piece of metal. And then you've got a repeating pattern going on. So it repeats in this direction in the X and then up and down in the Y. I'm willing to bet that because I gave you the dimension from this corner to this corner, if you were to draw two triangles and then pattern them horizontally and vertically, you'd have it nailed. So in a second sketch on the face, draw one triangle here, draw one triangle here, and then pattern them over and down. And note right in the, uh, in the title block, they're equal lateral triangles, okay? So that might screw some people up that are looking for dimensions. The triangles are all half an inch high and that's all you need to define it. So when you go in and draw the triangle, if you have put an equal relation on this leg, this leg and this leg and say how high, you got it, it's fully defined. So that's the three things we have to do, the grate, the mirror, and the gear? Yes. And that's that, that will be plenty. Yeah, I try to do three problems per class because in any assignment, I don't want you to mess up one and then just be totally lost, you know, because there, there will be days when you're going to go, what is he thinking?
Okay, guys, so do you want me to stay on or should we end the meeting here? I just had a quick question real quick. Yeah, Gage. We... So I have the sketch of the square on the front of the mirror holder and it needs to be, I'm going to assume we're going to cut extrude 0.125. Correct. Which way? How am I trying to say that? There's only one way that will actually cut material away. So if you do it in the wrong direction, you'll see no change. And then that's you not just what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. Why don't you share your screen? I'll stop sharing. Because like there's blind through all, through all both, up to next, up to vertex, up to surface, offset from surface, up okay. to body and mid plane. So in that case, you're going to want to use blind. Blind, okay. Blind means to a depth. And you'll be able to type in a depth, put in the 1.25. You mean just 0.25? 0.125, yeah. Okay. Where's my coffee? If you could stay, I would really appreciate it because I'm having issues with my- Ow! Okay, that didn't sound good. That hurt my ears. I'm sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. You are, do you have two mics going at once with your, or do you have your no. mic and speakers? Yeah, you're actually signed on twice, so like, Oh, I think when I switch computers, it has me on the other one. Is it better now? Yeah, you had a bunch of interference because the way you just had your mic and you had two mics and two speakers, sets of speakers going at once. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so when I go into SolidWorks to do the pattern, I can't seem to get it to repeat. Can I share it to try and look at that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for me now on the mirror holder, all it is is a matter of putting that oval sock oval slot at the top and I'm good to go. Okay, nice. I doubt I knocked this out one this one up pretty fast actually. Wait, is that all the way through? Is that showing all the way through? Yeah, so if you look at the blueprint, you'll see that the dotted lines for the ends of the slot go all the way to the bottom. So that tells you that it's a through slot. Okay, sweet. Thank you. Okay, I like So when I do this, I, so I click the pattern. Let me try to do it again. Okay, you got a really big object that you're trying to pattern. Is that maybe the problem? Yeah, I mean, I would go with something smaller. How do I delete this? Because when I right click, I don't see a delete. Uh, so those are your principal planes and you don't delete them, but you can make them invisible. So if you go I want to delete the boxes though, not the, the planes. The boxes. Oh, here we go. Cause I, I keep getting these random like little boxes and I don't know where they come from. Oh. Uh. So those are your principal planes that you're moving around. Oh, okay. So let's then, make let's make your screen a little bit cleaner. Go up to view. Go down to hide and show. And then click off the axes and click off planes because you don't need them anymore. Whoa, uh, that's so much better. Yeah. If you have too much junk on the screen, it really, it'll mess with you. So if I wanted to delete this one to just start over, yep. how would I do that? Because the delete's not on that one. Okay. Or would so I go to go up here? To the t go up to the top. First, we got to get out of the sketch that you're in. So exit sketch to the left. Click. No, you didn't click it off. That shaded box needs to be white. There we go. Okay. Now go down to the part manager where it says boss extrude. Right click and go down to delete. Good. Okay, sweet. And then go over and delete sketch one. Or 
reuse it if you want to. So now yeah. I have a smaller one. Yeah. Oh, it's weird. It made a big one. Well, you never get rid of the first one. I don't get rid of this one. So the way I would encourage you to do it is start by just drawing a piece of metal. So that would be just a rectangle? Yep, just a rectangle located in space. So I would stop where you're at, honestly. And I would exit out of that sketch before you get too much further. And just start over? Uh, well, no, what I do from here, zoom out, show me the rest of what you've got. No, that's in, go the other direction, there you go. So delete the small rectangle. Go back to sketch one, right click and hit edit. You're not in the sketch. Okay, so now delete the little rectangle. You can put a box around it and then just press delete. There you go. And hit the delete. Okay, so from there, go ahead and say okay. Do the green check over in your part manager. There you go. Now exit the sketch. Top on the command bar. There we go, good. Okay, now extrude that. So go to the features tab. To the left. Extruded boss or base, good. Okay, it's asking what do you want to extrude? So just click on the sketch. Good. And then you know, for right now, let's just accept the default. We'll say okay. okay. Now go ahead and draw on one, of, yeah, start a new sketch on one of those faces. Down. That one? No. You're editing the sketch that created the initial piece of metal. Go ahead and exit out of that sketch. Click on that face. And bottom row, second icon from the left, sketch. Okay, now you've created a totally new sketch that you can put geometry in. Okay. Now, personally, I find this a very confusing orientation that you're drawing in. One thing that I would do here is I would go over to where it says sketch three in the part manager, right click and see that normal two second icon, the one on the far left or far right top. That one? Cl click that, watch what happens. Whoa. Now we're looking directly at the sketch. I was looking at it upside down. Yeah, you were looking at it at some weird skewed angle. I had a quick question. Yeah, shoot. So is that 0.510, is that, that's the diameter of that oval, right? Of the uh, straight slot? Okay, I'm gonna go back to... The 0.510 I think is the diameter of that straight slot, right? Uh... I was just making sure because I set my slot radius to 0.255. Yeah. All right. Point five one, And that, that kind of brings up uh, something that I always harp on. If you're gonna put a half inch bolt in a slot, never make the slot half an inch. You gotta leave a little bit of clearance to drop the bolt in. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's 0.51. All right. Which means once I close my sketch and extrude that, I should have this entire thing done. Sweet. That was pretty quick. How do yeah. I get back into the triangle? 
to move it. Okay, so share your screen now. Well, oh, I think it's still sharing it. You no, share I, I had to take it back. Okay, hold on. Because I need to check a dimension. Stop. And it's finished. Nice. Yeah, I have to remember at all times that some of you guys are going to take to this faster than others, and some of you may just have more background than others. I played with a few programs in the past. And that I feel definitely... like I'm on the other side, like I'm on the slower side. You know, if you haven't done this junk before, then yeah, it's, it's a slow learning curve. I find that we get to about the second week, like the third or fourth class, and then all of a sudden I start seeing light bulbs go on in people's faces like, oh, I get it now. But this class has a notoriously slow initial learning curve. And, I just feel like I'm struggling just with the drawing. <laughs> yeah, you, you are, but that will all get much, much better. Yeah, I can, I can uh, second that. I remember I was really struggling and after, at some point, everything was so clear. Yeah, until that light bulb goes on, it, it's rugged. And I feel for you guys until that happens. But that's part of why I just throw you into drawing right away. Just get you do it, do it, do it, do it. And then the light bulb comes on. I'm not going to lie, I think it's upside down, but for the purposes we did, it doesn't really matter where the positive axis is for the Z axis. No it, no, it doesn't. There's no gravity in cyberspace. Exactly, perfect. Is it okay if we use more dimensions than you? Uh, why would you? I'm uh, patterning the triangles right now, and like the uh, bottom or the rows below the top one, are all undefined? Um, I'm gonna go get my test. They shouldn't be. Oh, that sounds like a fun time. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go get my uh, brain picked with a cotton swab. Yeah, I had it for the flu last year. I loved it. I'm scared to get it. Oops, wrong one. Yeah, Ryan, you should have everything you need on this. Uh, the only thing you're probably, the only thing I see that you're missing is, remember when I talked about the angular skew of the pattern, how it can be you know, swept off to the side? You are going to need a dimension for that. So we can unless, add an additional one. Say again. So we can add an additional one. Yeah, you're going to need something that says that this corner and this corner are directly on top of each other. So go ahead and add that. So yeah, you can set like okay, a. Thank you. So you can set like a like a construction line or or a center line just to say that they're vertical. You could do it that way. There's sure. a vertical relation. That all yep. you have to do is just put a vertical relation. Yeah, e either way, either a number, say, you know, a distance of zero horizontal offset or a vertical construction line, however you want to do it. All right, I'm going to go. Thank you. Okay, Gage. Thanks. I'm still not sure how to get back to the triangle that I made. <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna stop sharing. Why don't you go ahead and share? Let's see what you're looking at. All 
Okay, so to get back to your triangle, go click on Sketch 3 in the Part Manager, right click, and in the upper left, hit Edit Sketch. Now you're in the sketch for the triangles. Was that the I question? Just, yeah, so I just need one to do the pattern. You're actually gonna need two. You can do I mean, it as two. Okay, let me, let's put it this way. You have the option, and I don't care how you do it, as long as the geometry is right. You can make the triangles as two independent patterns, or you can create a single pattern with two triangles in it. Don't really care which way you go. Do you have to fully define it before you do the pattern? Yes, you do. Okay, I don't think I did that. And so when I've been fully defining it, I've noticed that if I right click, it says it here, and then it does it. Yeah, I, I, don't understand I, I encourage you the, not the to dragging. use that. Yeah, do not use that fully defined button. That creates absolute garbage. So like with this, I would drag this line out and then this line out. So what are you trying to achieve by dragging the lines out? To get the measurement? Uh, oh. So first off, if you make an equilateral triangle, you don't need to put an angle on. Okay, all the sides are the same length. So the only thing you really need to define is the height of that thing. So, so if you choose, that? click on the bottom line, there you go, and click on the top vertex, the point at the top. Uh, nope. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to take back the screen and let me demonstrate. Okay. Uh, let me get out of this. Exit that. Delete. And maybe I'll just edit this. I'll get rid of the contents of the sketch. I'll say normal two. So what I was encouraging you to do, if you want to use a polygon thing, that's fine. Don't care how you do it. So you can do a polygon, three sides, and that's fine. At this point, what I would do is I'd add a relation and say, make the bottom line horizontal. Oh, I had two I things. I don't think I'm seeing your screen. I think I'm seeing mine. Uh, no, you should be seeing mine because I am I sharing stop. it. Okay, there we go. I have to stop or it doesn't go back. Okay. So let's see. I got to get rid of this. Oh, come on. Get out of that command. Is there like a keyboard shortcut? to do this smart dimensions with? That probably is. I'm not a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. My brain doesn't work that fast. My reader just doesn't pick up like the lines. And so it's hard, really hard to like do the smart define with it. Okay. So let me take this from the top now that I've messed it up. I'm still in the stupid relation command. All right, let's try this one more time. Control A, select all, delete. Why is it saying add relation? So with the triangle, because it's an equilateral, do you have to put like the 45, like the angle for each of the three in it or no, because they're all the same. So you would just. Uh... Nope. 
So the way I actually drew it was like this. You did it with the lines? Yeah. Okay. So you do that. And then I automatically get the horizontal constraint at the bottom. I'll say, okay. And then if you just say, so I got my three lines, I say they're all equal. That gives me an equilateral triangle. How do you say they're all equal? You apply an equal relation. So let's try that again. So let me do it really wrong. Okay. So there's a really terrible triangle. Oh, and then when you do the smart dimensions, it fixes it? Yep. So I clicked on add relation. I've got line six already selected. That's the bottom one. I'll choose the other two. Now I've got all three lines selected and I'm gonna say equal. That immediately gives me an equilateral triangle because all three sides are equal. But it's all where skewed the off. Add relation button. So go to the top where it says display and delete relation. Okay. And then add relation. So I gotta clear my selection box. I'm gonna to choose to add a relation to this bottom line. I'm gonna say horizontal, just by clicking the horizontal button. And that's it. So now, if I want it of a specific size, I can choose the bottom line, and I can choose the little point at the top or the vertex, and I can put in whatever distance I want so let's say I want it one inch. There we go. Okay. And now I have a one inch equilateral triangle. I'm underdefined because I still need to locate this triangle in space. So I'll choose that. I was having a really hard time with that one where I, I could get the height and the width like the rectangle, but I couldn't get the space. So where did you go to get that one? That one. The what? space dimension. The space dimension? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For its location on the plane. Oh, uh, that I just drew the triangle anywhere in space, just uh, just pick points, and then I use smart dimensions to locate it. So, how did you do it with the smart dimension? Okay. So you're saying, what did I do from this point? Yes. Once, once it's moving all around? Yeah, how do you lock it into place? Okay. Make sure I'm not in a command. I'm going to choose smart dimension. I'll choose the bottom line. And I'll go down to axis three. So I've clicked on the bottom. I've clicked on the axes. And I so can you don't drag it, you click them both. Correct. There's no dragging involved. And it's the access and not the plane. It doesn't matter. You can go to either one. When I'm looking at an edge on either one amounts to a line. So it's all good. Okay. okay. And then the same thing. I'm going to click. I'm in smart dimension. I'm going to click on the vertex. I'm going to click on axis two. And I'll set the distance of whatever I want. So you have to define the X and the Y axis to lock it into place. Yes. And then do you also have to do the plane as well? Do I also have to? It's for no. like the quadrant that you're in? No. No, because the planes are all set up um, right from the beginning in SolidWorks. Okay.
Okay, anybody else have some questions? How would you recommend doing the teeth for the gears? Well, so there's a couple ways you could do it. You could either do it the hard way, which is you could try to draw the whole thing all in one shot, which is really painful. And that gets back to the keep it simple um, philosophy that I have. If I was gonna draw that, and actually I did draw that, I would probably start by drawing just a disc, an inch thick of the proper outer diameter. Then I'd do another sketch on the face of the disc and I would do those, those four little punch outs. And then after that, I would worry about how to get the teeth on. So what you can do, let's do something kind of similar. So you can start off by Okay, so now I've got a disc. And let's clean up the view. That's way too busy for my taste. Okay, so now I just have the disc on the screen. I would draw on the face of this thing. So I'll put a sketch on the face. And we could do something like Obviously you got to do the exact geometry, but you could do something like this. And of course, since we just went over patterns, using patterns would probably be a good idea. And what I'm creating is something like a cookie cutter, conceptually. Oops, wrong button, my bad. So that is an ultra crude version of one way to do it. Wow, that looks like the quality of gear teeth in my old tractor. Um, another question, in the uh, drawing of the gear, yep. does it say that it's one inch thick? Yes, it does. Huh, okay, so, okay. So if oh, you look, I, I know what the problem is. Okay, thank you, thank you. and you're gonna have 30 teeth on this thing. And hopefully you're not gonna sit there and try and draw 120 lines to do 30 teeth. That would be like really, really yucky. And then you go to the boss and say, oh, take two teeth out. <laughs> oh, come on now, Manuel, no cheating. No Boston gear. <laughs> Professor, I sent you a, a a text, a chat, a chat, hope that's okay. I, I'm sorry, I just didn't hear that. You sent me what? Uh, on the chat, I sent, I sent you a private message. Okay.
Are there any like um, tutors or tutorials that you would recommend for like resources um, for like the basic drawing section? YouTube has gobs of basic drawing stuff. Some good, some bad. Um, certainly start there. Unless I've specifically told you not to do it, like cut extrude of circles or putting in explicitly drawn threads. I mean, most of it's pretty good. And I'm okay with different techniques. You know, you don't have to do it exactly the way I do everything. Lord knows when I was out in the world, if you had two designers draw something, you know, you would always get something different and that's okay. You know, as long as it's not gonna create a mess for the other users or somebody else that's gotta pick it up, I'm good with that. And you know, bad habits like explicit threads. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go What's through. That? Explicit threads. So for that one, that's where you can actually see a physically drawn thread in your part. And let me see here. Ew. Okay. So, so alleged, go to the chat window on the side. Oh, whoops. Okay. And I just posted a video link. Go ahead and watch that video. It's how to fail MEE in five easy steps. I, I thought you'd like that, Ryan. Yeah, thank you. So that is all the bad stuff that I always see and I put it all in one video. So hopefully you guys can take, you know, however long the video is, watch that and don't do this. Okay, and I've tried to demonstrate why it's so bad. Sweet, thank you so much for sharing. Because like if you try to do finite element analysis on something that has explicit threads and you're trying to break up a thread into little blocks, oh my God, it's awful. It is just really bad. When you're doing like a spine and like for instance, like if you like finish it, but then you need to delete a, a point. Is yep. there a way to do that? To delete a point on the completed spine? Um, so let's see. When you say spine, I, I, I think what you want to say is spline. Like yeah, a curvy a line. Thing. Okay, so nothing that we're doing right now should involve splines. You don't want to go there. Pretty much everything we do in this course is going to be lines and circles or partial circles called arcs. Okay, I thought the spine was how you did the curves for the line. No, no. Okay, so are you seeing my screen right now, yes. Ledge? Okay, so let's try this. Let me get rid of that. I'll get rid of this. And I'll actually, I'll put a sketch right on the face of this disc. And then I'm gonna orient it like that, okay. So for example, if I draw a line and I go vertical and I'll go horizontal, 
and I want to make a nice rounded little contour in there. I'll choose the fillet tool and I can click on the end point of the two lines and do something like that. But I'm never going to use a spline. So a spline would be something like Yeah, you do not want that. Yeah, I was trying to replace this, the line tool with the spine because I thought like the cor because the like the corners were auto forming. No, 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 but no, 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 no. Lines and arcs. Lines and arcs are your friends. How do you use the arc tool? Okay. So the arc tool. You got a couple different options in arcs. And in fact, this is actually not a bad setup for going over that. Pull that down, pull this over. Okay, so let's do a center point arc. We'll choose the first option. What you do, the first click is your center. You drag out to the size of the arc. Now I'm going to left click again. And as I move my mouse pointer over, I can uh, define the end point of the arc. So that's one way you can do it. So if you wanted to move that one, is that possible or do you have to like redo it because of the center? Nope. So let's say that I want the end point here to be on the end point here. The easy way to do that is just apply a relation. So I hit display delete relation, then I hit add relation. I'll choose the, I'll choose the end point of the arc and the end point of the line and I'll say merge. And now the arc is right on the line. I'll say okay. Whoa, Tip that's awesome. Typically, you don't want these little sudden changes in curvature, you know, this little thing, because a machine tool can't make that, not easily anyway. So I'm going to add another relation between the line and the arc. And I'm going to say tangent. And that smooths out the transition. Now this is much, much easier for a machine tool to make. That what I can just... What does tangent do? What, like, what does that mean? Okay, so the technical definition of tangent is make the slope of the transition from this line to this line equal. Okay, and in real people terms, what that means is make a smooth transition from this line to this line. So for example, if I get rid of the vertical and now I do something like this, if I drag the endpoint over, see how it smoothly transitions from the line into the arc? Yeah, that's so convenient and awesome. Yeah, that's, that's one you use all the time. Because if, if you don't have tangent going into a corner, it's just a mess for manufacturing. Unless you're doing something like laser cutting. You know, if I'm laser cutting sheet metal, then it's a piece of cake, you do whatever you want. But if you're gonna use something like a milling machine or some spinning cutter, no, oh, no, no, no. Gotta have tangency. Okay. I was so, reading through the one slide for the final project and you had mentioned something about like the engines, how you don't really like go over that and that there's books, uh, but I'm not on campus. Is there other ways to get access to that resource? Oh, just go to YouTube. Just yeah. YouTube for the engine info? Yeah. 
there are all kinds of people that have built those little tin can engines. Okay, so that was one type of arc. Let's do another one. Let's do, a, oh, here's a good one. Let's do the tangent arc thing. So I'm gonna click on the endpoint here and I'll click on the destination and it automatically drops in tangency. So that one's quite useful. I use that one quite a bit. So I'll accept it. Uh, and then there's the three point arc. And this one's really nice when you're doing slots. So let me show you how you use a three point with a slot. So I'll draw a rectangle like that. We'll choose the three point arc option. Choose one endpoint, choose the other endpoint. And now you're gonna choose where you want, how fat you want it. And again, I'll make sure I add tangency. Isn't there the slot like shape though? Yes. Yeah. So why would you do this over using the actual, the, the one that's already there? Like, is this just more customizable? Nope. This is just to show you as a learning exercise. You're absolutely correct. If I had to draw a slot, I would grab the straight slot um, object and put that on. I would go just like this. And I would not bother to do all that other foolishness. But just for the sake of discussion of, you know, how do you use a three point arc? Yeah, it's a fine example for that. Okay, guys, I got about another 10 minutes and then I've got a boogie. So do we have any other questions out there that I can answer before I throw you to the wolves and leave you alone? I think you answered all of my million questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is all good, I mean, that's what tuition is for. You pay me to answer questions. And thank you so much for responding to my million emails yesterday. Yeah, that's all good. Thank you, Professor. I am going to. Okay, Emmanuel. <clears throat> Jackson, how are you doing out there? All right, still just trying to get the teeth on that gear. Okay, but you got the basic idea of what I was showing you using a cookie cutter. So you put a circle around the outside, then you draw the gear profile. That's one way to do it. You could also draw the teeth on the, the first extrusion if you wanted to. Equally valid, don't care which way you go.